hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about another Synology mobile app for their NAS platform and today I want to talk about DS Cam. It is the client application for your Synology NAS for MVR use. Now I've already set it up, I've already got cameras recording in real time right now and I've got me leaning forward there rather unhelpfully and let's be honest probably not great for my back there in the background but what I'm going to do is sign out now so we can look into this like you were going to be utilizing this for the first time and throughout this video I am going to flick between the two cameras in the recording area that I am in. So what can we see from the app? First and foremost, this is an app that can be installed on iOS and Android. And throughout the course of this video, I will be using screen recording software. So occasionally, there might be the odd difficulty during uh, the record where pixelization may happen of the recording. I apologize in advance, but unfortunately, that is unavoidable on a screen recording software when I'm accessing cameras that in themselves are going to use a lot of any embedded GPU on this phone. It's a Pixel 2 XL, but still, it's a lot of work. So, first and foremost, let's look at the options this app comes with, and there's actually quite a lot. Um, notwithstanding the ability to save stuff there, as well as the licenses for online validation, and again, that is a lot to do with camera licenses as well. Um, we can see a little bit more information about the version we're using, 3.4.2, but it may have been updated by the time you watch this video. But there's even more settings once you log into the NAS. Now, you can log in remotely over the, uh, the internet if you have set up a Quick Connect account, or you can go ahead and run on the IP. I've enabled a few different options there for different NASs in the past, but for this one, let's go ahead and log directly into this. It's going to move the mic, because right now, you can see on screen that we've got the two cameras happening in real time. Now, let's go ahead and select one of these cameras. Let's go ahead with the top one there. And this top camera there, you can see a lot of the recorded footage and me rabbit in there while looking at my phone. I'm just going to wave at the camera to see what the delay is going to be like. So starting now. Hope you guys caught that. That's actually not too bad a time. And again, scrolling through footage, incredibly easy. We can just scroll right the way back. Nice and easy and scroll straight away at the touch of a button. Scroll along, scroll along. And this camera is set to live right now, but we can flick back to old recordings. We can rec uh, change the playback speed. We can pause nicer and easily there. And if we go to the camera recording at the top, we can full screen if we choose and enable some of those options. Now, a lot of this while I do on screen, you're probably going to see it there in the background. So if, for example, I hold it to the camera like so, I can show you guys that pinching in, nice and simple, with pinching on the screen will show the zooming in very, very easily indeed throughout the whole thing. And we can flick to older recordings if we choose from previous dates that we have them recorded. And likewise, all of the effects I'm doing on screen will still happen. Now, different options at the bottom will change depending on the camera of choice. For example, this camera is not a PTZ. We do have a PTZ camera laid out for this video. But again, you can flick back to the old recordings. You can go back quite crazily there. Uh, that's uh, kind of the early recording period there. And you can go back to events as well, if this camera has recorded events. And if you are using an optical zoom, you can zoom out. And there's lots of options there at the bottom with regards to extending and changing the recording play line at the bottom. Again, taking snapshots if you choose. And if it is a pan tilt zoom camera, you can go ahead like so and operate that pan tilt zoom very easily there and again just to give you some idea about how much work i've got to do at the moment let's bring that down and there is my horrific workload on the floor of hardware that i'm currently reviewing out of its boxes all over the place um, carrying on so again if you are using a sophisticated camera that has um, optical zoom you can go ahead and zoom straight in there this is an optical zoom camera but of course digital zoom is an option so let's go ahead and zoom that camera in nice and deep and we can go straight ahead and it can now operate that zoom so it's still quite a high quality there of you watching me watching me watching me watching me but let's come out of there let's remove that recording screen there and come out of the camera so again we can then come out of this camera here and there's lots of options if you have multiple cameras flicking through so now we can go for this ceiling mounted camera here and again you can get a better understanding of all that stuff that I've got on the floor and the job that needs to be done. You can also take a closer look at that camera there in the background. So if we full screen it there, the camera that we're operating, these are both Rio Link cameras, it has to be said. 
and you can look at them but unfortunately pinch zoom doesn't work on this camera because of its model so again all of the events are recorded as well so and if there's motion there that was when my uh, wife popped by to see why i'm still at work there we go and again move it kind of along there you can flick between different things flick between aspect ratios you can edit a lot of the events but these are more to do with the options you see on screen than to actually edit the camera and that's Probably one of the things I don't like about this app, as much praise as I think I do give this app, I will highlight that this application, one of its early downfalls, for me at least, is that a lot of the controls, let's flick back to live, um, although you can control the feeds that are on the camera, it's very difficult to add cameras without the desktop application. This is a purely a client app. This is one where the original application, the desktop surveillance station um, 8 app has all of the control and you can only have as much control as that app gives you so this is still a client with a client's level of control it doesn't have full admin control so a number of you may not like that it still has more control than arguably a lot of platforms but adding extra cameras and stuff like that is by no means as straightforward as easy as possible but you can obviously do manual recordings if you choose rather than relying on the preset ones you can go ahead and enable some of those other options let's go back into them there let's go back in open the options there you can take a snapshot if you like and save it locally as discussed you can change the screen quality if you have a camera that has multiple streams uh, that are of varying quality and bitrate you can flick between them here which is quite handy it has to be said in case you're using a device that's going to struggle with that large amount of data being sent to it and any recordings that have happened such as these ones that have happened during the middle of the night here they will be kept so again you can see a lot of it there you can also see on that recording there in the background if we full screen it my other camera there working in the background that has um actually got its own leds there kicking in recording this area so again lots of levels of control and again if we are looking at old recordings we can ramp up that um speed there of it recording there quite substantially but nowhere near as much on the desktop i do think a lot of that is obviously toned down for the client application because of the devices that you're using on it are clearly going to be ones that you know are a little more modest let's put it like that in terms of uh, what they can do and again we can go back and go back into the main menu there because then you've got the multi view we can look at both cameras live right now and this camera here is still got that zoom so let's remove that zoom there let's come back out there zoom out and again that is an optical zoom if this was a digital zoom it wouldn't do that but what we can do is come back out of there and we can have a look at those two different streams now the one of these cameras is recording at a lower frames per second but a higher quality than the other so if i get up and go for a very quick walk let's see if you can spot which one it is So as you can see, when we did that there, the bottom camera is a much higher quality, but the frame rate has been lowered to keep it um, better. Now you can adjust that within those stream settings, but I've done that so that that which is a wider recording, obviously is going to get more out of it. Um, if we go over back into the views, we can check out those recordings in a preset recordings area. And again, at the top, you can see those live recordings happening in real time. And remember that you can flick to an old recording if you choose, but if you flick to an old recording, it doesn't stop the recording from those cameras. They're happening right now in the background while I'm still flicking through preset recordings from during the night, which is always handy. Same goes with snapshots that you've taken. We've taken a couple there throughout the course of this video. As you can see, those recordings have happened. And you can download them locally or lock them if you choose to stop anyone editing them or deleting them. Notifications um, all appear here, but a lot of those are going to be very much based on your user and your client that you sign up for notifications. Home mode is something I've not enabled, but I am going to do a dedicated video on this because I think home mode is a wildly underestimated feature of Synology's uh, surveillance platform. Nice and simple, what it means is with your home location, you can do a geolocational uh, um, location where you can say, right, I want to give this app uh, my location. From there, you can then pair a device like the mobile that you're using. And then what you can do 
is if your phone leaves a certain area while it's in your pocket, it can trigger different things. It can make the recording start or make the recordings stop. So for example, if you're at home and you're using your phone and uh, it's in your pocket or whatever and you're watching movies and you go asleep, you don't want the cameras in your home recording you. But if you leave the house, you might want it so the minute you leave your house, your cameras kick in. But the time you leave the house varies wildly. So what you can do is change it so that if you leave your house and walk away from your house, the app can see that you've left your geolocation and enable all the cameras. It's a lovely mode that allows you to have the cameras recording, but not when you're there without you having to change the settings manually. Now, licenses, if you want to apply new licenses, the options are there. But again, you will need to go ahead and do a lot of this with a lot more accuracy, I would say, on the desktop platform to add cameras. Because if you go into the camera setting, adding cameras is not really a prevalent or easy available option. That needs to generally be done on the desktop. You can change the display style. You can go ahead and change the adapter and change the order that they're in. But adding cameras is by no means a straightforward process here on the app. You've got options there and they've added a bunch as well. So you can get some analytics there to be collected in the background that you can see. Same as the info display on the cameras and if you're using decoding. But ultimately, a lot of the configuration options and adding licenses and adding cameras is definitely done a great deal better on the desktop platform overall. But ultimately, I would say, looking at the notifications there, you can choose how you want them. I should add on that before I end the video. But this has been DS Cam for Synology NAS. It's a lovely little app and it's just as user friendly and just as smooth and silky as the application you can use both on client PC and Mac devices as well as one on the web browser. If I had to say things I'd change, I wish there was a better degree of control on the application to add cameras and maybe configure a lot of the alerts. You can kind of do it. Let's go to the recording session at the top. Let's go ahead and record back there. Got lots of information there. We scroll back and back and we can see, for example, on these recordings, the different cameras are working in real time. But I, I kind of wish there was a lot more of the desktop configuration tools and the ability to add some of the applications, add some of the services. Um, last thing before we end this video, I will add that for those of you that are interested in adding uh, mobile phones, um, as cameras or streaming to YouTube. They do have options there to stream to YouTube. Again, that's more of a desktop application, but you can also use LiveCam to add the camera that's on your phone and add it to the Synology NAS. It will use a license to do it, but it does allow you to use your mobile phone as another camera in your surveillance setup. But I'm gonna wrap things up here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know. Click like at the bottom if you like enjoyed this video. And of course, subscribe to learn more. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this where I am going to be talking more and more about the apps. I'm wondering if my lips are syncing with the audio from this mic, but let's find out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.